What is up YouTube, Mr. Gizmo here. I'm going to do a multi-episode explanation of some suspension components, uh, springs as well as shocks or struts, and that will lead me into what I want to do with uh, O-Leans and how I want to adjust them. There's a little bit of a hiccup with the O-Leans and how they work with uh, camber plates outside of just uh, stock mounts. So I'm going to discuss that. And today I would like to start with springs. Um, how they work, the bump or the compression component as well as the droop or the extension component and how it impacts travel, uh, the height of the spring, the width of it, the diameter, uh, the number of coils, etc. Uh, so let's get started. As the car sits here, right, let's say you have a 3,000 pound car. I know this is not, but for illustration purposes. If you have a 3,000 pound car and it's perfectly balanced, you know, front to rear, left to right, you're going to have 750 pounds that are resting on each one of the four corners, right? And what's actually supporting the weight of that car, it's really just the spring. So if you were to take out the shocks completely, you would basically be left with a spring that's supporting the entire weight of the car. So in front of me, I have three different springs. So this is the stock uh, front M3 spring that I took out. And this is actually a spring that comes with the Olean's kit, so for the front. Uh, and this is a kind of a custom-ish Swift spring. Um, so you can see the thickness of the coils is different here, right? The width or the diameter of them is different um, as well as the height. And so normally springs are quoted in pounds per inch or, you know, kilograms per millimeter or however they're quoted. And so this spring I think is about 150, I wanna say. This one I think is 400 pounds per inch. And this one I got, I believe it is a 325 pounds per inch. And the way that you can understand that, you can actually understand that number in two ways. So for illustration purposes, again, these are all uh, linear springs. They're also progressive springs. And so progressive springs have a couple of coils that are usually a little bit softer and then they have the harder stuff. So they still provide you kind of the dual duty, if you will, of having a little bit of comfort on the street. But if you want to kind of really push it and have a little bit more fun, they do provide uh, something a little bit stiffer. So these are just linear, which means it's the same rate for the entire spring. So the way to understand 325 pounds per inch is two ways. One is it's the amount of force that's required to compress that spring by an inch, right? The other way to understand it is if I were to compress the spring by that amount, right, how much force is going to exert back, right? And so as the car sits there, so the car sits right now, I don't have a good angle, but I will show it later as I'm taking off the Olean's. The car kind of sits at equilibrium point right now, right? Where it's a certain static height. So, so at equilibrium, the spring is actually compressed a certain amount to support 750 pounds of weight and it's remember 150 pounds per inch of kind of compression that's the force that the spring is going to exert back so you're going to have to compress this spring about five inches to be able to support 750 pounds on a particular corner this spring on the other hand is 400 pounds per inch so in order to support 750 pounds this is going to be only compressed about 1.8 1.9 just, just under two inches basically to be able to support that amount of weight this one is 325 so this one is going to be compressed uh, a little bit over two and a quarter i want to see like two to maybe 2.5 inches or so so important things to consider is you want to make sure that when you're kind of selecting the springs that you want that you go with the right rate but also the right, the right height and the right diameter. So if you were to go, so this is a Swift spring. So if you go, were to go on the Swift site and you were to go and look up this, if you can see there's a 060 here. If you were going to go look up a 060 spring, it will tell you exactly all of the specs. The unloaded height of it, the pounds per inch or kilograms per millimeter, however they quote it, you can convert them really easily. Uh, the diameter here. So the diameter here of the spring actually matters. You can see, you know, there's a drastic difference here. So if you were going to get, you know, a specific color that goes onto your strut, 
or the top mount that goes on into the strut you definitely want to make sure that it's appropriately sized for the size of the spring that you have. So this one is two and a half, this one I wanna say is four, and this one is a little bit over four. So definitely, it definitely matters. You want to match them up. The height of the spring also matters. So one of the things that I wanted to discuss today is uh, kind of bump versus droop, right? So again, we said the car as it sits here, it's at equilibrium. Once you start jacking up the car, you will see let's say my left hand, which is this one, is going to be the wheel and this is going to be the chassis. So as you start jacking up the chassis, you will see that the chassis will go up and up and up and up. At some point, the tire will stop sitting on the ground and it'll start coming up with the chassis together, right? So basically between the equilibrium point and the point when the chassis and the tire start coming up together, that's the amount of droop that you have. So pretend you're coming up to a crest with like a really big drop off and you're going fast enough to where you could potentially catch air. If your droop is, you know, very, very minimal, meaning like if the chassis goes up by like a millimeter and the tire goes up together with it, you would basically catch air, right? However, if you had a lot of droop, if let's say you had two feet of droop, right, to where the chassis can come up two feet before the tire actually leaves the ground, you could probably take a pretty big crest and not and not have the tire leave the ground and still kind of keep rolling right so that's kind of the, the droop component and so the bump or the compression component is going to be what's left over so to speak from you know the car sitting at uh, equilibrium or a specific ride height and pretend again this spring would be compressed about five inches or so as we said before at uh, the current equilibrium height uh, and then before the coils bind so this component is the compression or the bump. Pretend that you compress this spring, you know, kind of the full foot to where each coil is sitting right next to each other. So pretend that my fingers are these coils and you compress this spring enough to where the coils are just sitting right on top of each other. You're not going to get any more compression out of this spring, right? Like the coils are just going to be bound and you basically be acting as if you had no more spring left. There's a very uh, important component that we're still missing in this whole setup, which is the shock itself or the strut and so i'm going to talk about that in the next video just because this one is already getting a little bit too long